So we were talking about manifold pressure on a T6, on an engine, and the proper definition escapes me because it's been a long time since I was actively flight instructing and, and had a good answer for that. But basically, the way you operate an engine, an aircraft engine at least, is you have two handles in the cockpit. One is for your throttle and one's for the RPM. So I think of it like the RPM is your transmission. You got a five-speed transmission, pick a gear, that sets the RPM of your engine, it really does. And then your throttle, right, you can push it down, you can, if you're in a low enough gear, tall enough gear at a low speed, you, low RPM, you can push the throttle all the way to the floor and nothing really happens, right? It just takes slow to get there. You're making lots of manifold pressure and minimum RPM. Not a good way for an airplane engine to do. So in this case, you would drop a couple of gears, get the RPM up, and then you could get on the gas, get the manifold pressure back up, and then it would really take off because you're making horsepower. And all horsepower is calculated based on um, RPM and manifold pressure. In fact, and a better way to do this, to get a true answer is when we're in the tower, we can pull out the chart for the T6, the power chart, and it will literally tell us at what altitude, what RPM, what manifold pressure, how much horsepower you're making. And that's how I know that when we take off in the Sea Fury, you're making about 2,250 horsepower is because of the power charts. You look at the power charts and you can see. But so the question is how much effect, the net question is how much of an effect does removing the air filter from the intake help on your racing? And I would guess 10 horsepower if I had to guess, maybe more than that, could be 20, 25, uh, could easily be 20, 25 actually. So this thing makes about 600 horsepower stock, that's the official number. And racing, we figured about 900. And, um, and so you do all those little things to try to get there, including, well, that's a, that's a story for another day too. But, but it becomes the discussion about manifold pressure and RPM. And in racing an, an airplane, or car for that matter, you want all you can get, right? The RPM, you're going to be limited by, um, by basically the engine and how it works and how it's designed, what RPM you can run. And the same thing here. We're limited by, on RPM by the size of the propeller. And then the manifold pressure, in this case, is really everything you can get. Although, as a quick aside, we normally race at Reno at 5,000 feet. So you get maybe 37-ish inches of manifold pressure, which is just above takeoff power for a T6. 36 is officially takeoff power. But we were racing in Phoenix, Arizona, down at uh, pretty well sea level. It was just a lot lower. And the guys were seeing 42 to 44 inches of manifold pressure, even 45. And they started uh, roasting the engines. And everybody thought it was the 20, it was the oil that was using that the different oil sponsor had provided and whatnot. And I never was sure because we were just running so much more manifold pressure than we normally do. Um, and T6 motors, you don't generally blow up when you're racing because you're not allowed to do a ton of mods. But we'll go, we'll go into those stories later about what engine mods you can do, and at least back in the day when we were racing. Here's a couple of the plaques mm. that were added to uh, so, your toy here. So started, and this is, this is 30 years old here, but started with the first, um, the first race that Dad did was um, third in the bronze, and then the next year we had the hopped up race motor, did a lot of mods, finished second in the gold. Third year won the gold, and the fourth one is uh, too much speed and time is gone. That's also a first in the gold victory. And that was uh, its racing career until I raced it later and Jim Bennett raced it later, but uh, not much success. Not like that. Weren't after it. Although, I take that back because Brother Ken won the gold race in 08. And there you go. So this airplane is pretty much a time capsule of kind of how it was 30, 40 years ago. We've just flown it a lot. We raced it and worked on it a lot for a short period of time. Then we traded the airplane for the Sea Fury, which is definitely a story for another day. But we traded this one straight across for crashed remains of the Sea Fury, rebuilt that one and got into another project. And then 15 years later, came back to this airplane and got it back. So it's been good to have this airplane back. So many stories, so little time on this reel. So uh, thanks for checking in Flight Lore and Sea Fury Central, checking out. <laughs>